what we're going to be looking at here is just a basic example with a carry back and a carry forward of net operating loss and how we'd handle this for tax purposes here. So this is what we're going to be looking at in our example. We're going to have some pre-tax income here that I'm showing for four years here, 20x1 through 20x4. And what we're going to be concentrating on is this year 20x3 here, where we're going to have a net operating loss here of $300,000. Everything is in thousands of dollars here. So what we have to know here when we're calculating our taxes and doing the carry backs and carry forwards. We have to also know our tax rate and I'm showing that here for each of those years here. 35% here for 20x1, 50% 20x2, and 40% here for years 20x3 and 20x4. So we'll start here with this year $300,000. Uh, dollars worth of net operating loss and we're, for 20x3 and we're also going to be looking at year 20x4 here of $180,000 worth of profit and how that would be integrated and hit the, this net operating loss carry forward here that we're going to have. Now what we're going to be doing here is also concentrating on how we record these uh, our taxes here for each of those years here. How we'd record it here as part of our income tax expense section here on our income statement. Okay, so let's start with year 20x3 here with the $300,000 loss. Now, we have, in this case, we can carry it back here two years. I'm showing two years here that we can carry it back here and carry forward. Well, it could be 20 years. I'm just showing five years here. That would be sufficient to car carry our net operating loss forward in our example here. So let's look at uh, uh, looking at the carry back here. So what you do here for, we have that $300,000 worth of loss here and we can carry it back here in two years. So we start out with the first, the most, the uh, latest or the last year, the more, the first year that we paid taxes on that two-year carry back and that was we paid taxes on $44,000 worth of income here for 20x1 and also 20x2 we paid taxes here of $96,000. So with the net operating loss we can carry it back and we're going to get a refund on our taxes here. So let's look at first our loss carry back here. So that uh, since we have the $300,000 here we can and the the 20x1 and 20x2 isn't going to absorb this total loss here. We're going to be able to carry some forward. So let's look at the loss carry back here. So for year 20x1 here, we take the $44,000 worth of pre-tax income and we pay 35% taxes on it here. We would calculate that would be included in our loss carry back plus also for 20x2, the 96,000 here that we paid taxes on here at the 50% tax rate. So uh, taking those sum totaling those amounts here, we're going to come up with a loss carry back here of $63,400. That's going to be our refund here on our income taxes since we can carry back this uh, loss here for two years. Okay, so now let's look at the carry forward here and how, what that amount would be here. So remember, we have the total $300,000 worth of loss here. We absorb $44,000 of the first uh, 20x1 carry back here and 96,000 in the second year of uh, carry back here. So we'd have to subtract those amounts because we've already used up those uh, the loss carry back of those amounts. So subtract those amounts here from your $300,000 worth of loss, you're going to come up with $160,000 worth of loss carry forward. So that's what we can carry forward of that $300,000 worth of loss after our carry backs here. So now for our carry forward forward here. We have that here at 160000 here, and this is where we'd use the tax rate that we have here for 20x3. So we take that 40% tax rate here times the 160000 carry forward. That's going to give us $64,000 worth of a what they deferred tax asset. So we're going to be able to use that against any taxes that we're going to pay here for year 20x4 or anything in the future here. the $64,000 worth of what we call a deferred tax asset. So let's go down and let's look at how we'd record this here. So really what we're going to have is this tax refund receivable here on our balance sheet here. So that is, we're going to set that up here and then we're going to also have the deferred tax asset and we'll look at how our tax, uh, we're going to record our tax benefits in both of those cases. So for starting with our tax refund here, that was what we calculated up here, those amounts here of $63,400. So we would debit our tax refund receivable for $63,400. And then the credit would go to a tax benefit due here for the loss carry back here on the income statement. Now, this is a contra account here. This reduces any tax expense that we might have here. This is a contract. Works opposite. It's um, any increases here would be a reduction to our 
any expense that we have here. So for our tax benefit uh, loss carry back, we would credit that here for $63,400 based on the tax refund that we're going to receivable here of $63,400. So debit here uh, equals our credit over here for a tax benefit due on the loss carry back. Again, this is on our income statement. Now for the deferred tax asset. We have to set that up here. So that we would have debited here for $64,000 here. This is again for uh, year 20X3. That's what we calculated here for the loss carry forward for the uh, deferred tax asset here. Okay, so debit that here for $64,000. And then we set up our account here, a tax benefit due again for the loss carry forward. Again, this is a contra account here on the income statement. That again reduces any tax expense that we might have. So. Uh, for deferred tax asset, debit it for 64000 here, and then the loss uh, tax benefit due for the loss carry forward or income statement, credit it here for $64,000. And that's simply our calculation that we made here up above for our loss carry forward. Okay, so just remember that our tax benefits here are split between the loss carry back that we have here and the loss carry forward based on that net operating loss that we had. Okay, so now let's, and again, remember that these tax benefit dues are contra uh, expense accounts on our income statement. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at how we record this here. So looking at our income tax expense section here on our income statement here for year 20X3. Again, we're dealing with 20X3. So you would have to list out here your operating loss before income taxes that we had here of $300,000. Now we have to break that out here for our income. It's going to be reduced by our income tax benefit that we calculated here. So First, looking at the benefit due to our loss carryback, we last list that here at $63,400. That's what we calculated up above. Then we had a benefit due to the loss carry forward of $64,000. So totaling those amounts, we're going to come up with an income tax benefit here of $127,400. So that's going to reduce our operating loss here before income tax of $300,000. So subtracting that out here, uh, or we're going to come up with a net loss here for the year of uh, $172,600. So just remember here, the tax benefit, both the loss carry back and the loss carry forward here, reduce our operating loss before income taxes. So that that gives us our net loss here for the year. Okay, so now we've taken care of year 20X3. Now let's go back and let's look at, let's move up here for year 20X4. Now remember, 20X3, we're gonna, ha we calculate, we still have to deal with this loss carry forward deferred tax asset that we have here. That's gonna be a credit against any taxes that we're gonna pay here in year 20X4. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at how we're going to make our calculations here. So what we have here for us, the benefit that we have here, the deferred tax asset, again on our balance sheet here, remember we have our debit amount here of $64,000 and that can be used against any tax expense that we have here for year 20X4. So we could, we just, Let's first, let's first go and look, calculate our tax payable here. What? So how do we come up with our tax payable? That's the current amount of taxes that's due here as a liability here on our balance sheet. So we start out with our pre-tax income. Remember that was at 180,000 here. Now we have the loss carry forward here. So we can absorb most of this pre-tax income here due to the loss carry forward of $160,000. So what we're gonna end up with our pre-tax income here are the, for the year of uh, 20x4, 180,000 less our loss carry forward of 160,000 gives us our taxable income of $20,000 for the year here. So you can see our pre-tax income is reduced by any by that loss carry forward that we had. Okay, that. So what we have here for our tax payable for the year here, we have our taxable income of $20,000 that we'd have to pay on times our tax rate of 40% here gives us a tax payable of $8,000. Okay, so now based on our deferred tax asset here and our tax payable, the current amount payable for year 20X4, we can calculate our tax expense on our income statement. This is for our financial accounting here. So let's look at how that is done here. So deferred tax asset, we had a debit here, 64,000. We can use that up here 
for our taxes pay up our tax expense for the year here so we credit that out here for sixty four thousand dollars and that's going to be debited against our tax expense here on our income statement so we've got the credit here of sixty four thousand and then we have our tax payable we had that again a liability here on our balance sheet we had a credit in here that we calculated of eight thousand dollars so simply deferred tax asset that we're using up here 64,000 the credit amount here plus our credit here to our tax payable here for the current amount of 8,000 gives us a tax expense on our income statement we would debit that here for $72,000 okay so that's taken care of 20x4 here calculating our tax expense based on our what we have here shown here for pre-tax income versus and our loss carry forward Okay, so let's go and let's look at how we'd report this here uh, in, on our income tax expense section on our income statement. Again, this is for year 20X4. So we take our income before taxes. That was 180000 here for the year here. And then we have to subtract out our income tax expense. So what we have here is the current portion and the deferred portion here. So for our current portion, that's that $8,000 worth of tax payable that we have here and then the deferred portion that's the deferred tax asset that we're using up here that's available to us so uh, we take our deferred tax asset that was a $64,000 amount plus our current amount here the tax payable of 8,000 gives us our income tax expense here for the year of $72,000. Uh, subtract that here from your income before taxes of $180,000. You're going to come up with net income here for the year of $108,000. Okay, so that was our, this is just uh, our basic example here where we're, we're dealing with a carry back and a carry forward here of a net operating loss that we had here. And just remember here, we worked with our tax uh, benefit uh, that we had here for our deferred, uh, for our carry forwards here uh, we set up this deferred tax asset here and then you we were able to use this deferred tax asset here in the next year here because we had income that we could uh, use this uh, deferred uh, income that we have to pay taxes on here so we could use the deferred tax asset up here and just remember in this case here we also had some tax payable here because our pre-tax income here for the year here was greater than the uh, loss carry forward amount here that we had. So we had to have some payable amount here. So uh, what we had here, we calculated our taxes payable, our current amount here, and then we could uh, determine our tax expense that would go to the income statement here based on using up our tax deferred tax asset here and our tax payable here based on that pre-tax income of $180,000. Okay, so that'll take care of our basic example here dealing with a carry back and a carry forward of a net operating loss.